Hi, it's Mark de Maisel. Um, uh, I've changed my mind about implementing Bitcoin into the permanent portfolio. Uh, a few days ago, I made a lot of videos about why I should implement Bitcoin into the permanent portfolio. Um, however, after um, discussing it more uh, and going through the different arguments uh, on the permanent portfolio forum, uh, I've realized that uh, I was wrong. So, um, I'll go through the arguments that convinced me to do it and why uh, they don't convince me anymore. Um, I had two strong arguments uh, I found in favor of it. Uh, the first one being that, um, well, the permanent portfolio um, uh, has as objective to protect you in different, in all, hopefully in all economic climates. Um, and um, when I was studying Bitcoin, I realized that if Bitcoin becomes mainstream, um, meaning it will, it will get a market capitalization that goes into the trillions, um, and at that case, um, it will suck a lot of value out of uh, cash and uh, gold and even stocks and bonds, as I explained in the other video. Um, and uh, that's why I thought that uh, Bitcoin should be part of the permanent portfolio, uh, just to also be protected uh, against that scenario. Huh? Uh, against the scenario that if Bitcoin becomes a mainstream currency, then uh, the permanent portfolio will lose value. So if you have some Bitcoins in it, um, even a small percentage, uh, that will not be a problem. Uh, however, the argument against that is that although this is true, uh, it's only true when Bitcoin becomes a mainstream currency, when Bitcoin goes into to a market capitalization of a few trillion. However, today it's only a few billion. Uh, and um, uh, if Bitcoin goes up to, say, a few hundred billion, um, then still it won't affect the permanent portfolio. Eh? Maybe a few percentage points, but that's negligible. Eh? Uh, because the assets of the permanent portfolio, gold is 8 trillion in value, uh, cash is uh, 15 or uh, if you count all cash in the world, it's 30 trillion in value. Um, and then stocks and bonds is over 100 trillion in value. So if, 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 if uh, Bitcoin becomes uh, a few hundred billion, that's not a problem. Even if Bitcoin becomes uh, a few trillion, it won't be a problem yet. However, uh, after that, when it becomes as big as fiat currencies or gold, eh, uh, over 10 trillion, then it will have sucked away um, some serious value from the permanent portfolio. But that's a long, long, long way off. Eh? So you can wait uh, until it's a few hundred billion at least before uh, that would become a problem. Eh? Um, so it's just too far away to already take that into account. So that's, uh, that uh, debunks that argument. Eh? Um, and the second strong argument in favor of implementing Bitcoin into the permanent portfolio that I did not discuss in the videos is that, um, is that uh, Bitcoin uh, offers a lot more protection against confiscation uh, than the physical gold in the permanent portfolio eh? uh, because the problem of the physical gold in the permanent portfolio is that um, you can't move it around eh? so let's say uh, you get a court order um, and uh, I, uh, an unjust court order against you and the government confiscates all your assets, then you lose your stocks and bonds and you also lose your cash, cash uh, because that's also short-term bonds, but uh, you will not lose your physical gold, so, so you still have that, that's a good thing. 
However, um, you can't get on a plane with that. Eh? Uh, in contrast, uh, because you have all these detectors, eh? in, so you can't escape your country with that. Eh? And storing your physical gold uh, with it third parties in other countries um, is, uh, is, 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 well, actually, I don't think that's secure against confiscation because a, uh, if a court order is sent to these other countries, these other countries, all third parties, like I'm saying gold money or bullion vault or, or um, uh, Perth Mint or in, in Australia, uh, they have to give your assets eh, when they get a court order, even when it comes from another country. Eh? Um, so, and even Switzerland, eh, well, um, um, not if the court order is tax evasion, then they won't hand over your assets, but if it is anything else, they will. Eh? So, um, uh, so, so, but Bitcoin, that's also not true. Eh? So Bitcoin, you can store yourself eh? uh, and um, court orders won't make a difference. Eh? They really have to uh, make you give those Bitcoins. So that's uh, a better protection. And uh, even when you compare it with just holding physical gold in your own possession, well, it's not movable. Eh? So if you would have, say, instead of 25% uh, physical gold, you would have 20% gold and 20% bitcoins in the permanent portfolio, you certainly would be better protected against a confiscation scenario. Eh? Uh, but the 20% uh, the bitcoin adds so much currency risk that, it's not, that it does not outweigh this, this this confiscation advantage. Eh? Uh, so you can't do that. Uh, just to have a better confiscation protection, you cannot add such a big currency risk to the permanent portfolio. Eh? Um, so then you could say, okay, I'm going to just do a little bit of Bitcoins, 5%. But yeah, then it means that you have 23% gold and then plus 5% Bitcoins. It, then you are not really so much better protected against confiscation either, eh? and you just get an ugly portfolio eh? with, with uh, not four equal assets, but four equal assets and a five, a fifth asset that's not equal. So, uh, so that's why, and also when it comes to confiscation, I think just with the current permanent portfolio, you can do a lot uh, to make it more confiscation proof. Eh? Um, I'm not going to go into that right now, but I certainly personally can do a lot more eh, uh, to protect myself against such scenario without involving Bitcoin, eh, because uh, yeah, you the cash these days, short-term bonds don't give any interest, so you can you can actually confiscate, uh, protect that also very well against confiscation. Uh, so. Um, so I, I've decided that I'm not going to do uh, the Bitcoin in my permanent portfolio. I have done it uh, the past few months. Eh? I had 5% Bitcoin. So I'm going to, I have t taken that out eh, and moved it to my variable portfolio. And I also moved the profits out. Uh, I just add them now for my variable portfolio. And that way the returns of my permanent portfolio correspond with the permanent portfolio index again. Uh, which I like. Uh, it's easy to compare then whether I'm under or overperforming. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I think uh, Bitcoin um, belongs in the variable portfolio, uh, and it's it's I I think a very uh, the best speculation, uh, the best risk reward ratio I have ever seen, uh, and. Um, so, but that's for another video. Um, I just want to say something more about all the process that happened. Eh? What I noticed that uh, with me when I'm thinking about investing, I have this security part eh, that is responsible, uh, a part in me eh, that is very fearful of losing money. And he is responsible for my permanent portfolio. Eh? And then I have a, a more uh, bullish part, eh? a part that wants to make make money, and I'm I make him I made him responsible eh? for my um, variable portfolio. Um, this I 
thinking in parts and talking with the different parts uh, these days as the way I'm investing. Uh, and it's a, a new process that I didn't do a few years ago. Uh, and I learned this from IFS therapy, uh, internal family systems therapy. Uh, and um, But I'm going to make another video about that because that's another topic. Eh? But uh, I've just noticed that uh, um, uh, it happens often that my um, fearful part wants to actually influence the decisions that I make in my variable portfolio, which is not good, or that my, as just happened, as my bullish part wants to make decisions in my permanent portfolio. And so what happened is that my bullish part that really believes in Bitcoin uh, convinced my safety part that we sh there should also be Bitcoins there. Eh? So, um, and it's just the old story of letting fear and greed take you over. Eh? Uh, if these things happen, you, make, you end up making bad decisions. Uh, and um, I still suffer from that. Eh? So it's, I, I'm really grateful for the permanent portfolio community, the forum, where um, a lot of people responded to my ideas about uh, implementing Bitcoin into permanent portfolio with rational objections and uh, sympathetic responses. And uh, that really has helped me uh, to see that uh, I was wrong. Eh? So a special thanks uh, to Pointed Stick who made an extra effort for that, and uh, uh, Greg uh, Rowland also responded, um, and some others too, and, and thank you very much for that. Uh, you can find those discussions if you visit the Permanent Portfolio Forum. So thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I'm always uh, interested in your feedback. If you think I'm making an error, again, eh, that's certainly possible. So um, I'm always interested in your feedback. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye.